Hey, that was mean. Don't you scoff at the kitty. Yeah, you just sit up there on that pillow. Then you'll be higher than Luna almost. And then you'll have dominance. <laughs> Stop being so jealous. Hello everybody and welcome to Pignet. If you're not familiar with my channel, nice to meet you, my name is Jessie. This week I'm back with another watercolor video. I know I just did one two weeks ago and I think that the watercolor series was going to be a little more spread out, but I've been really enjoying doing this, so if you're new to this channel, I've basically been trying to learn how to watercolor for the first time, like I've really been trying to give it a fair shot because I never did before. And I'm documenting my learning process as I go along, so if you haven't watched the series before, I'm going to link it in the description box and I'm also going to link it somewhere in this video, as well as at the end. In today's video, I'm sharing what I believe to be my biggest watercolor takeaway so far since I've been learning. Like, I think it's like the thing that I didn't understand and I'm like, oh, and I'm finally learning it and I learned it just through trial and error myself. But I'll get to that later. The reason that I'm back with another watercolor video so soon is because this painting is actually a gift and it's a companion gift for my best friend whose birthday was two days before mine, so early June. And once again, I was really nervous about starting this so I chickened out and I like waited around and I don't know if I'll ever get over that. I think I'm always going to be afraid to start projects. And I already have another idea for a watercolor video and once again, I think what I'd like to do is maybe YouTube some different techniques that I could try and like I haven't put much more thought into it because I'm afraid of what to do for it and I'm afraid to start it. There's a little bit of a story behind this painting. My best friend and I have been, we're cousins, we've been best friends since the dawn of time. My earliest memory of her is when she was in diapers, so we've been friends forever and we still talk every day. We're still the bestest of friends and I hope everyone gets to have a friend like that someday because I really feel like I won the lottery on that. When we were little, one of our favorite things to do was to take care of something. It usually only lasted about a week or so. We would pick a new stuffed animal and then we would like take it everywhere and it would sort of be like our like children and we'd do everything with it and like pretend like we were little parents. Which is ironic because now, fast forward 20 years later, we're both terrified at the idea of like having babies. <laughs> so it's really ironic, but one of the animals that she had chosen to take care of was this giant monkey and actually the monkey looks more purple in the end and that was kind of a mistake by me. I didn't want to shade it with like gray so I shaded it with purple then I kind of got carried away so the monkey ended up being basically purple overall but in real life the, this was like a giant stuffed monkey that was white and really fluffy. I think mine was just a teddy bear at that point like I had a bear and she had a monkey and she made up this song for her and her monkey and I'm gonna sing it for you guys and this is exactly how it went. <clears throat> Me and my monkey eating lots of bananas in a little red wagon on top of a hill. Isn't that just beautiful? I can't take credit for it. I didn't write it. But for her birthday, I wanted to get her a wagon for her garden. I found out that wagons are freaking expensive for starters. I decided to just get the classic red wagon you know, the radio flyer wagon. And then I was like, oh yeah, the red wagon. So I decided to paint this as sort of a companion gift to go along with this red wagon. So that's the story behind this particular piece. And that explains the lyrics that were written below it. That's that famous song. This is the gift that I got for my best friend. Um, she's not gonna use it like that. The intent is that she uses it for gardening which is a little more like this chick over here. Do I dare try to assemble this myself or do I wait for Justin? Okay. All right, I'm done. You wanna go for a ride? Huh? 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 Wow, those are some big honk and tonka wheels. What is that? Oh no, I need a hammer. Down to the basement, kitty. Great news, Luna. Building a wagon. Oh, ooh, and look what I just found. Bing, boom. All right, okay, I gotta put this, are you helping me? Are you building? Are you building things? Wow, that's a lot of instructions. 
That's better. It's so hard, I can't do it. Jack, this is not for you. I know you, what did you just look at? This thing is shown going through that thing, which goes through those two things, and then connects with a nut and bolt over there. However, see how there's that little like nib there? Oh my God, focus. It says to put it up through here, but it doesn't fit. And if you don't fit it, it like teeters. So am I just supposed to let it teeter around under there? That doesn't make any sense. I think I need Justin's help. I'm supposed to be a strong, independent woman and I can't do this. Luna gave up on us too. No, don't, 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 don't touch. Don't touch those, Jack. Well, geez, I couldn't even do step one, right? I can help you put it together. I mean, you'll probably need my help. <laughs> Look what I did. Just kidding. Justin did it all for me and I watched. But you know what? Remember that part that I was having trouble with? Apparently, that's how it was supposed to be. So I didn't do it wrong. I just didn't have the faith in myself. This painting in particular was scary to me because it was my first time painting a human character. A human. And I wasn't sure of how that was gonna go. It actually ended up being pretty, pretty easy. <laughs> and then I also tried a new technique where you sprinkle salt on the wet painting and it kind of sucks up the moisture to leave a texture underneath. I decided to do that for the background. Basically, I think my biggest takeaway that I've had that I learned for this is that you don't have to paint really fast. I always felt like painting with watercolor meant racing a clock like the second that it dries that's it there's nothing you can do about it so you better make sure that whatever you lay down you better make it count because that's gonna dry and then you're screwed so i used to try to like really rush to get all the shading in as fast as possible in the first go and i've kind of realized it's a lot more flexible than i thought it was like maybe that's not a huge tip i guess but it was for me, so I feel like it is. You don't have to rush, you don't have to lay down a bunch of paint. You can go really slow and do light layers and just build up slowly, and that's something I never really knew before. So that's kind of what I was doing here. I laid down a bunch of light layers. I didn't want to overwork it, so I was really conscious of that. It kind of just made me realize, like, I don't need to worry about that. So I was pretty happy with how this turned out, and Spoiler alert, she loved her wagon and the painting, so I think it was a success. And I feel like I want to elaborate a little bit more on the fact that sometimes people will ask, I feel like one of the questions that people ask all the time is, how do you come up with your style and how, you know, how do you develop a style as an artist? And I understand that drawing style is one thing, like the way that I draw characters is one thing, but you guys are literally witnessing me start to pick up on a new potential style that I can use for like future things. I always loved watercolor paintings and watercolor illustrations in particular, but I never knew how to incorporate that into my work and I'm so used to working digitally. So now you guys are getting to see like, I'm starting to get excited about this because I'm starting to think like I can sort of do like a mixed media thing. Like I did the sketch in Photoshop, I'm doing the watercolor here, and then there's things in the, like the post work that I could do back in Photoshop again, and I haven't even figured out what that is. Maybe different paper textures that you add in, like, I don't know, I'm just, I'm getting excited because I'm starting to see like the potential. I feel like I'm feeling things out and learning a new way to make art, and that's like super exciting. So this is how you do it. Like, if you're wondering how do you develop an art style, you're literally watching me do it. The only way that you can develop an art style is to sit down and make art, and it just happens. Developing an art style is just the result of making art. It's like a no-brainer, it's common sense. So it can be frustrating when you don't know what you're doing and you love the idea of being able to make art in some certain way, but you can't do it. And the only way you can do it is to do it, is to practice and to learn, because I always wanted to be someone that could make an illustration with watercolors, and I always admired people that did it, and I never really tried it. And then I tried it, and it's like, I'm, I'm learning, you know? At least I think I am. You guys need to understand that this is a process, and it takes time. If you think that people that are more established as artists have their stuff together, like, nobody does. Even the best 
artist out there has the days when they feel like their stuff is terrible and like their work is getting stale. It's just part of being a creative, unfortunately. It's just part of our roller coaster that we ride as uh, emotional creatives that are like, we feel really good one day and then we feel down about something the other day. I know I'm going to have paintings in the future that I'm going to be like, wow, I'm a crappy watercolor artist, but then there's times when it's not going to be like that. It's just something that I was thinking about the other day. I was like, oh, I'm developing a new art style. Look at that. Next week will be a Copic drawing video. I mentioned this in the last video. My plan is to take the new set of Copics that I got for my birthday and only use those colors. It's called Earthshade, so it's two shades of green, two shades of brown, two shades of blue. I'm going to try to figure out what to do for that, but I got to figure it out soon. So if you guys have any ideas, let me know. So keep an eye out for that coming up. I did just get a comment recently. Someone was saying that they wanted me to do another Copic video. And it's kind of ironic because I was thinking to myself, it's been a while since I feel like I've done just your classic color a thing with Copics. So if you're interested in that, keep an eye out next Friday for that to come out. Let me know what you guys thought of this painting. I thought it turned out pretty good. I was pretty excited about it. I'm going to scan this and sell prints as well as upload it to Redbubble, so I'll have links to that at the end of this video as well. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys like this video, let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Normally I ask you guys a question for leaving a comment, but I feel like I don't have one today. You guys know that I love getting comments, so even if you just say hello or tell me how your day's been going, how about that? How's your day been going today? Let me know in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys next week.